Hello, my name is Michael, and in this lecture, we are going to develop custom controls using the UI5 extension mechanism. Sometimes our control library does not directly match to the use case that you're looking for when creating apps. Fortunately, it's quite easy to inherit from any of our UI5 controls and extend its functionality or to create an entirely new control. Using the following examples, we will implement two concepts of software reuse to create our own controls on top of the UI5 framework. Example one is a lightbox example that you might know from web pages, and it's a good example for control inheritance. And example two will be a poll example, um, and it's a composite control uh, combining other controls and displaying them. In the UI5 documentation, these controls are often referred referred to as notepad controls or on the fly controls because the process to create one is very easy. But before we actually dive into the examples, let's have a look at the mechanisms that allow for creating such controls. The extend method is a core feature of UI5 and available on all controls. It's used to define a new subclass and there are two ways of calling it that we will both use to create the examples in this lecture. We will inherit from the image control by calling the extent as shown in this code block here to create our lightbox effect. Don't worry if you don't know what lightbox is, it will become clear in a minute. And we also use the second call for our Paul example to inherit from the control base class and create an entirely new control. So the extent method has two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the control and the second one is the definition of the control. Let's have a look inside the definition part. The control definition is represented as a JavaScript object with a specific set of keys identified by name. As with all UI5 controls, there's the metadata section describing the properties, events, and aggregations of the control. Properties represent the state of an object and can be set and read out by the application. The getter and setter methods are created automatically for you. Events allow for registering an event handler function so that the application or another control can react to the new control state. Finally, aggregations can hold a single item or a list of items, but in contrast to properties, they can also be of complex data types or other controls. Typically, the aggregations of a control are managed by a data model. Methods define the control's behavior and how it reacts to state changes. We will have a deeper look into these on the next slide. And finally, the renderer creates the HTML structure for the control that is to be inserted into the DOM tree of the application. On this page, we will show the control definition in a simplified code structure so that you can see how to define the different types of data. Since we already talked about the letter metadata, Let's have a look at the method section marked in orange here. These methods will look different for each control and strongly depend on your control's task. For instance, there are public methods that can be called by the application to update the control or private methods that are purely for internal use and defined to structure your control. The init method is the controls constructor and takes care of the instantiation of the control. The onClick method is an event handler that will manage user interactions. There are many more mobile specific event events such as orientation changes and touch events. Now let's start with a simple example. Imagine you want to build an image library uh, using the UI5 framework as seen on the screenshot. Typically you can click on the small preview image to open the actual image centered on the screen. The background is darkened to focus on the image. That is why the effect is called lightbox effect. So how could we represent this with our UI5 framework? We need a clickable image that displays an overlay with the large image and a caption. The overlay can be closed again by pressing a button or the image respectively. We therefore reuse the SAP M image control type and add a new property called large that will hold the URI of the large image to be displayed. Before we take a look at the coding, let's just try it out for ourselves. 
you can see the app with the lightbox control here and we embedded it inside a carousel so that we can show multiple images. I'll just go to the next image by uh, pressing the arrows here or I can also swipe on a mobile device. And if I click on one of the images, I will open the lightbox with a large image. We can see the new state of our control in this screenshot. A dialog is displayed by attaching to the image's press event and showing the large image with a caption. What is a bit special about this control is that we can reuse the image's renderer and add our own functionality as internal control methods on top. When preloading the images, we will also display a busy indicator to inform the user that the image is loading. And for the caption, we will just reuse the property alt from the image. We don't need another property for this. The very simplified coding of this control can be seen here. We have the large property representing the large image URI and the constructor function that adds a new event handler function to the controls press event. An internal method underscore open is called there that will display the dialog. And there is a link to the images renderer function that we will just reuse for displaying the preview. The full coding of this control can be seen here. There are a couple of style sheets and additional methods that manage the state of the control and layout. Feel free to take a look at the example by yourself. The link is uh, displayed in the slides. Okay, so what is missing for this control? We really simpli simplified this example to have a simple use case and the code of this control is only about 50 lines long. Uh, of course, there are some more features that we could build into this control. For example, when opening an image that is larger than the device screen and on orientation change, the control has to adjust to the image size. Additionally, the lightbox view should also be closed when clicking on the caption or on the background. But for simplicity, uh, we did not include these features in the control here. For our second example, I would like to show you a poll control that follows a different approach. We will ask a question, provide an interface to rate on a scale from 1 to 5, and show the results afterwards. This time, we will directly inherit from the control space class and build a completely new control. The properties are the question represented as a string, a vote event, and three internal aggregations for the controls that you see inside the white box on the screenshot. Let's have a look at the running example. So here you can see the poll control, and it's asking me the question, how do you feel today? So I will rate uh, on this scale here and give it four stars. And after voting, it will show me the results page with an average rating of all the people that voted before. So here you can see the results page of the poll displaying some fake data for illustra illustration purposes as we just saw in the live demo. The mechanism to create this control is to define a composite control consisting of two labels and a rating indicator. We switch the control state to display the results, to display the results page without having to render anything special by ourselves. The internal controls are managed by hidden aggregations these are aggregations that do not have a public interface, but can be used for a control to manage the state internally. The coding for this control is a bit more complex because we have to manage all these three new controls, but the basic concept is quite easy to understand. We define the internal controls as metadata and render them inside a wrapper div in the renderer function. Let's quickly look at the full example. Again, we have a couple of custom methods that manage the state of the control and the layout modifications. So let's quickly have a look at the full code example again. As you can see, there's a couple of style classes again th that define the layout. And there's uh, the metadata section that takes care of all the controls internally managed. And there's a method to display the results page. Uh, as before, you can see the full code in the slides. It's linked here, so you can just have a look by yourself.
And now it's time for a quiz. So how do you define a custom control in UI5 is the question. Answer A, sub.ui.core.control.extend. Answer B, sub.ui5.createNotepadControl. Answer C, sub.ui.define.custom.control. Answer D, sub.m.panel.extend. Answer E, sub.ui.createBlackHole. A hint to this question, there might be multiple correct answers. Also in this example, we simplified the control to focus on the main aspects. If you would do it for a real application, you would have to include a mechanism to access and compute the poll results. Text should be stored inside a resource bundle file so that they can be translated into other languages and the control should also adapt to the screen size of the device to fit. Now that you have seen both examples and the concepts behind building custom controls, it is time to try it out for yourself. On this page, you can find further information on this topic and the links to the example pages so shown before. So I hope you enjoyed the small lecture on building UI5 custom controls. Thank you very much. <laughs>